end of the countdown was here. Steve graduated from his professional mariner training course at Chapman and we packed up our belongings and said goodbye to Nettles Island. Not even 10 minutes after Steve graduated, we headed north to pick up our boat mentor, Stan. He was nice enough to help us out with our first sail from St. Augustine to Stewart. That night, Steve's mom and stepdad got a tour of the boat, finally, and we discussed plans for our first sail. After one final push to pack the boat with the essentials, we finished some important boat work like attaching the mainsail, and fixing the fridge for the third and hopefully final time. It's cold! Yay! Yay! Victory! The fridge is cold! Bella was beyond ready to go, and we made sure Costa was secure, did our provisioning or food shopping for four people for four days, and got lines and fenders ready for the big day. The last and most important thing we had to do was to put on our logo designed by our dear friend Carrie Ross. Constantina pays tribute to a friend and desert neighbor Costa, who passed away recently. He loved mermaids, he himself was a sailor, and even in his front yard, New Mexico, lies a huge Kedge-style anchor. We enjoyed our last sunset in St. Augustine and went to bed filled with excitement. Finally, after seven months, the morning of October 19th was here. There comes. Today was our splash date, and luckily everything went according to plan. We arrived to the boat storage in St. Augustine the Friday before our launch in order to prep the boat. When this Monday morning rolled around, we all got up early and made final preparations before the marine lift came at 8 a.m. This thing is a beast. It can lift up to 110 tons and with only two straps under our catamaran, it lifted it with no issues and slowly carried her to the water. They gave us an estimated time of an hour and a half from arrival to splash, but it didn't even take 30 minutes. I was a little overwhelmed with how fast it went because I was trying to get photos and videos of it the whole time. I spent so much time documenting the journey to the water that while I was sizing up my next photo through my camera's viewfinder, the boatyard manager turned around and yelled at me, You getting on or what? Yeah, the boat was ready to leave me. I had to re-watch the video of the boat going in the water a thousand times because I was too busy taking photos and videos, but watching it hit the water for the first time, I just, I got really emotional. It was a huge day for us and very exciting. When I finally jumped on the boat, Steve was at the helm and Stan was in the aft cabins checking on the engines. We had never fired them up except for making sure that they had some life back on land by releasing the compression releases and turning them over to make sure it was alive. I was tasked with watching the port stern side to see if water came out of the boat. That meant that the water was cooling the engine. It was a bit smoky at first, but sure enough, the water came out and the engines purred. The straps they used to lift us slowly slid off the front of the boat and we were floating on our own. No leaks, thank goodness. I ran to the bow to grab the lines from the person on the dock and after that, we were off. Stan helped us back out of the boat launch slip and we slowly turned south to head to the ICW. The marine center the boat was stored at was on the San Sebastian River in St. Augustine, Florida, and we needed to get to Stewart, Florida, which is about 170 nautical miles south on the Florida Intracoastal Waterway, also lovingly known as the Ditch. After about 20 minutes of the San Sebastian Channel, we hit the Matanzas River in our first bridge crossing, the SR-312 Bridges. They are fixed bridges at about 65 feet tall above the water. Luckily, it was tall enough to accommodate our 58-foot mast. And in the case of fixed bridges, we don't have to hail a bridge tender to open it for us. All bridges are different. Some will open on demand, some only open on the hour or half hour, and some are even every 20 minutes. Yet others are on a schedule but will open on demand if traffic is low. This was our first bascule bridge. A bascule bridge, also known as a drawbridge or lifting bridge, is a movable bridge with a counterweight that continuously balances a span or leaf throughout its upward swing to provide clearance for the boat. 
This one only has a vertical clearance of 25 feet when closed, so it's very important to pay attention to bridge locations and clearances. We highly recommend to have a bridge list with you. Print it and laminate it so that you can have it at the home station. Understand how to signal a bridge tender, treat them with respect, understand the rules of bridge crossings, wave to them, thank them, then sail happily along your way. Stan was still at the helm to start, but soon enough, Steve took over and had to hail the Crescent Beach Bridge tender for a crossing. 6 Bridge, 206 Bridge, the sailing vessel Constantina, approaching Tundra North, requesting the next opening. Good morning, Captain. Crescent Beach Bridge. I get this open uh, as soon as you're close enough. Continue on Channel 9 to clear the bridge. Crescent Beach, standing by 09. Appreciate Crescent Beach Bridge, standing by. With our first bridge crossing under our belt, we were ready for the rest of our trip. The sails were raised and we set a waypoint for the next dry bridge and put the autopilot on during a straight course down the channel, then relaxed with a cup of coffee, while keeping an eye on things, of course. The ICW can be a very busy place at times. Luckily, we were sailing on a Monday morning, so it wasn't as bad as the weekends, but lots of fancy boats were headed south for the Fort Lauderdale boat show. When the larger boats like sport fishers and trawlers, or basically anything larger and faster than us, were passing, most of the skippers would hail us over the radio on channel 16 to ask if they could pass on our port side. When overtaking someone, it's important to make yourself known and to alert the boat in front of you if possible. Most pleasure and recreational boats will use the radio instead of a horn. It's good to know the signals of both. As a boat that only goes five to 10 knots, we are diligent in looking behind us to know what's coming, mostly to avoid collisions, but also to ride the wake. Hey, darling, come to wake. The ICW is like a highway for boats and the scenery changes frequently within the towns you pass through. Sometimes the channel is wide and deep, other times narrow and somewhat shallow. A few times we would pass through what looked like a downtown, and other times the channel passed through a neighborhood and had homes and docks on either side. Plus, you never know what you're going to see out there. It's like a runaway Someone condo. That straight from that old awesome. island, bro. Woo! We saw quite a few derelict or even partially sunken boats, and regardless of where you are, you are most likely going to see dolphins along the way. We got some rain which caused some flooding along the canal and have now added a cockpit enclosure to the top of our wish list so that we don't get wet anymore. After crossing under four bridges, including the Main Street Bascule Bridge, we ended our first day in South Daytona. Steve and Cody took the dinghy for its maiden voyage. And yes, I had to get into. planned out the next day and we enjoyed our first dinner on the boat while Bella relaxed of course. Our first night sleeping on Constantino was amazing. Lots of new things to get used to such as sounds but overall very peaceful. 
We had a little bit of rain and then clouds the next morning, but needed to get on the way in order to get our eight hour sail in to Cocoa Beach. Our average speed is six knots and we can get up to about nine to 10 knots with the right wind. And of course we saw more dolphins. The winds were favorable that morning, so we raised the sails and cruised at about eight knots. It was another rainy day, but we pushed on in order to meet up with our friends who were in the Indian River near Titusville. After the Holliver Canal Bridge, we were in a large but very shallow waterway in the Indian River. As soon as we crossed under the bridge and got to open water, we saw our friends Bill and Linda. Bill was a classmate of Steve's at Chapman, and since then, we've grown to be good cruising friends. It was really nice of them to meet us halfway and help us down the rest of the ICW. While sailing there, I was able to get some time behind the helm and off in the distance we could see various NASA buildings as we passed near Cape Canaveral. When we passed through the NASA Causeway Twin Bridges, Linda got a sweet photo of Constantina. It had been a long day, but we still had 22 miles until our final destination of Palm Shores, south of Cocoa Beach. Good thing the sails were catching the wind and we were averaging seven knots instead of six, which might not sound like a lot, but saved us about a half hour. We passed through the Cocoa Beach Bridge, and by that time, Bella was ready for bed. We met up with our buddies, anchored near Palm Shores, and said goodnight to our stowaway. Stan had left us that night to go back home, so pulling up the anchor the next day was left up to Steve, Cody, and I. I took the helm during another rainy day, and Bella helped as well. Cody also got some practice behind the wheel. I was pretty nervous without our boat mentor being there, but we got used to things pretty quickly. The ICW was pretty choppy that day. The water much like what I would expect a typical ocean sail to feel like. Our next stop for the night was Hole in the Wall, near Indian River Shores. It was a really fun and relaxing day of cruising with my family. Bella was on dolphin lookout as usual. We enjoyed a beautiful sunset and a restful night next to our friends. Today's trip was a short one, just 18 miles to Fort Pierce, and while we could have kept going to Stewart, our final destination, we decided to anchor for the night and check it out. Steve took Linda, Bill, and Bill's mother to the beach on our dinghy, and after that, we celebrated our first successful dinghy ride as a family. We checked out the town a bit and admired the view from the shore. The current where we anchored at was a bit, um, challenging. We're in a real weird position because the wind is coming from our east, northeast, but the tide is going out east, back out to the ocean right now. So the boat is kind of spinning, it can't settle until the tide calms down. Wind was coming from the east and the tide was going out, so it created a confusing situation for our anchor and bridle. Normally both would be out in front of the boat as the wind hits the nose or bow of our boat, but in this case the current was so strong it was taking our boat right over the anchor and causing it to rub on the bottom of our hull. Was, however a beautiful sight to see the difference in watercolors all around us. There was a little spoil island nearby so we checked that out, did some fishing, celebrated Bella's first pee on the boat, saved the stowaway, and called it a night. Bright and early the next morning we took off towards Stewart, about 20 miles to our final destination, Hutchinson Island Marriott Marina. We cruised past Nettles Island and waved to all of our former neighbors, then passed under the final bridge of the trip. After a very successful first docking experience, we all sighed a big breath of relief now that our first sail as a family was complete. We walked the docks and said hello to our new neighbors, including our friends Bill and Linda, and then finished the five day, 170 nautical mile trip by the pool. Thanks for sharing the journey with us and stay tuned for our next mini movie, the renaming ceremony of our boat.
Shouldn't the captain, like, know his ship well enough? I do, and that's why I assigned this task to freaking swabs. But a captain should do it. No, a captain should not do this. He has to get to know his boat. I'm too educated to be peeling new stuff off of a damn... I won't talk about it. Watch your mouth. You're on video right now. This is so much fun. <laughs> I love boat life.